Hello and welcome to the channel. This is IGNU BAPCH dedicated for BA Psychology Honours. Whether you are starting a new journey with IGNU, seeking exam revision or even a little clarification on a topic, we have got you covered. So without further ado, let's jump right into it and explore the world of psychology together. This series is all about BPCC 102, that is Biopsychology. It is a core course in the first year of BAPCH. It has four blocks and six units in total. And today we're starting with unit one, introduction to biopsychology. Have you ever seen a picture of the human brain? I'm sure you have. Yeah, then you'll agree with me. It might not win any beauty contest. I'm not looking like crinkled walnut and all, but let me tell you, appearances can be deceiving. Weighing in around 1.3 kgs, this intricate bundle of tissue holds a mind-blowing number of neural connections or neurons that basically run the show for all our behaviors. And guess what? Despite its incredible importance, our brain remains one of the biggest mysteries of our bodies. This is where the magic of neuroscience comes into play. Neuroscience is all about understanding the anatomy, biochemistry and physiology of the nervous system. Now, here comes biopsychology. It's a close cousin of neuroscience, if you would say. It uses neuroscience knowledge to understand human and animal behavior. You might also know it as psychobiology or behavioral neuroscience. It studies how our behavior changes along with the evolution of the brain. Similarly, it also studies which areas of the brain are responsible for sensation, perception, memory and actions. Not only that, it helps to figure out the role of brain in emotions and expression regulation. It also studies how our behavior changes after brain damage or trauma occurs. Okay, so let's start the chapter with nature and scope and we'll explore the different branches of biopsychology. Even have a little heart to heart about ethical side of the research in the topic. So let's look at the nature and scope. Biopsychology, it takes us on a journey through the relationship between biology and behavior. It's all about investigating how biological processes are intertwined with our thoughts, emotions and psychological experiences. This field emerged as a distinct discipline within neuroscience during the 20th century. A significant milestone was D.O. Hepp's groundbreaking publication, The Organization of Behavior and it was back in 1949. So this marked the beginning of our exploration into the neural foundation of behavior. Okay, and uh, biopsychology is not an island unto itself, meaning it draws insights from various neuroscience disciplines. Think of neuroanatomy, neurochemistry, neuropathology, ne neuropharmacology, and neurophysiology. They all are working together to understand how our behaviors are connected together. Both human and non-human animals are the subject of biopsychological research. Of the non-human, rats are the most common subjects. However, mice, cats and non-human primates are also widely studied. This makes not only makes research easier, but also makes us understand about ethics. Okay, and biopsychology, it's research. It takes various forms like pure or applied, experimental or non-experimental. Pure research is a research that's motivated primarily by the curiosity of the researcher. It is done solely for the purpose of acquiring knowledge. In contrast, applied research is a research that is intended to bring out some direct benefit to the humankind. Now let's move on to the scope. Well, the scope of biopsychology is is huge and dynamic it's like peering into the very essence of behavior think about it we are talking about understanding how our brains and behavior they work together and how things like head injuries learning adventures and even exercise routines they influence our behavior and that's not all genetics and endocrine system they step into the spotlight and it helps us understand neurological disorders and overall well-being from biological perspective. It's like exploring the DNA of our actions and emotions. But it doesn't stop there. 
It also aims to understand brain evolution, how the nervous system develops throughout our lives and the specific part of the brain that control things like our senses, memory and movement. So that's the nature and scope of biopsychology. Now let's understand the division. There are six divisions that make up biopsychology, each offering unique perspectives on the interplay between biology and behavior. So the first is physiological psychology. Physiological psychology is a subdivision that studies the neural mechanism of perception and behavior through direct manipulation of the brains of non-human animals subject in controlled experiments. These researchers investigate the brain's role in behavior by directly manipulating and recording brain activity. This often involves surgical or electrical stimulation on animals to understand how neural processes steer our behavior. Next is psychopharmacology. This division explores the interaction between brain and behavior using drugs. Okay, it analyzes the impact of different drugs on mental health of patients. It considers how different compounds alter people's behavior by changing the way the person thinks or feels. You know that feeling when you have a cup of tea in the morning and suddenly you are more awake and alert? Well, that's the real life example of psychopharmacology in action. Now let's break it down. Now, uh, coffee, it contains a substance called caffeine, which is a stimulant. When you drink that coffee, the caffeine enters your bloodstream and eventually finds its way to your brain. Now, the caffeine can influence your brain's neurotransmitters and impact your behavior. So, psychopharmacologists study these interactions between drug and our brain to understand how different substances affect our mood, thoughts and actions. They play a crucial role in developing medications to treat mental health issues, depression, anxiety and more. The so third division is neuropsychology. Neuropsychologists, they focus on patients with brain injuries, employing tests to diagnose impairments and find suitable treatments. So neuropsychology is all about understanding how brain injuries, diseases or abnormalities influence behavior. Imagine we have a friend named John, okay, who recently had a car accident and he suffered a head injury. So after the accident, John, you know, started having trouble remembering things, focusing and even is speaking clearly. So that's where neuropsychology comes in. Neuropsychologist, you know, they use tests, assessment and brain imaging to piece together what's happening in John's brain, you know, to understand it. So by understanding which part of the brain is affected, neuropsychologists, they create a tailored treatment plan. They might recommend speech therapy or specific exercises to help John recover. Okay, so that is the neuropsychology. Fourth is psychophysiology. Now, psychophysiology looks at how our psychological experiences and emotions affects our physiological response. It's like studying how our mind influences our body. Okay, so psychophysiologists, they monitor bodily reactions such as heart rate, skin conductance, and muscle tension to understand how thoughts and emotions trigger physical changes. For example, they might measure how someone's heart rate increases when they are anxious or how their palms become sweaty when they are stressed. Okay, this field, psychophysiology, explores the body's re responses as a way to gain insights into our mental states. And the fifth is uh, cognitive neuroscience. Cognitive neuroscience is a study of how the brain enables the mind. Using non-invasive techniques like functional brain imaging, they explore how the brain supports intricate mental functions like thinking, memory and attention. Now let's say you are curious about how our brain handles music. Okay, that's where cognitive neuroscience comes in. Imagine you are listening to one of your favorite songs. As the melody plays, different parts of your brain lights up like a twinkling stars. The auditory cortex helps you process the sound while the frontal lobe might, you know, make you tap your foot into the bit. Cognitive neuroscience studies this by using brain scans to see which areas activate when you enjoy music. So this helps scientists understand how our brain turns melodies into emotions and why a catchy tune, you know, can stick in your heads all day. So number six is a comparative psychology. 
Comparative psychology refers to the scientific study of the brain and mental processes of animals. When studying behavior most closely related to human beings, scientists they use our closest relative. For example, chimpanzees have been used to study infant development and language acquisition. Other animals used in comparative psychology for their higher intelligence that include dolphins and African grey parrots. So, biopsychology has these six exciting divisions and they often overlap in their approaches. These divisions allow researchers to explore the brain and behavior from various angles and uncover the mysteries of our mind and actions. Okay, now let's check the ethics, research ethics in biopsychology. Ethics is all about following guidelines to ensure that researchers treat human and animal participants, you know, ethically. These guidelines are provided by organizations like American Psychological Association, APA, and Indian Council of Medical Research. In biopsychology, we often study the brain and its function and sometimes we use animals for research when human participants is not possible. But even with animals, we must be really careful and considerate. We need to plan the experiments well, only using animals when it's really necessary for important research. Most importantly, we must never cause unnecessary harm or pain to the animals. After the study, we take care of the animals until they fully recover. So it's all about being responsible and compassionate in our research to ensure the well-being of all participants. Okay, that's the end of the chapter for today. So let's recap quickly. Today we studied biopsychology, its nature, divisions and the ethical part that needs to be followed. In the next part of the video, we bring you the methods to study the brain. I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button below for more content in the future. Follow us on Instagram for quick notes and updates and join the discussion on Telegram for all your questions. Links are down below in the description. See you in the next video. Until then, stay curious, stay engaged and remember, you got this.